Hey, you fucks. Thanks for, you know, checking out the videos, showing a little bit of support. How about you take it to the next level and uh, show us some love over there on Patreon, huh? 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 Ooh, hello everybody, how you doing? Welcome back to another TQ Rants here. Today I've got an extra sexy, deep, allergy-induced uh, voice for you all. Uh, <clears throat> I wonder how different this this rant is going to sound compared to my other rants. <coughs> just simply because of my voice. Oh yeah, just proper heads up by the way. I have used already some of this B-roll from my previous... Uh, or from my Fukuoka trip in previous rants, <coughs> but I split that up in between, like, I, I didn't use a certain amount of a bunch of different, um, I think I used more footage from the temple I went to in this one, and, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm more chunky in this one by at least 20 plus pounds, but I, I don't care. I mean, that's one of the things is, like, when you're losing weight, you really don't give a fuck about showing yourself being fat because then people are like oh my god he's fat but then they'll see the other videos and they're like wait what he's oh but he just released a video of him being fat well yeah he, he was fatter in that video because you he filmed that a year or two ago so that's why and they're like oh well well, well i'll be god damn it but anyway yeah that's just a heads up that this is uh this is just a bunch of random footage from that trip of me and my hetero life mate mr papa tetsu and um yeah <clears throat> so apologies if i cough sneeze or uh sniffle um uh, during this uh rant i'm i i think this is allergies i'm not 100 percent sure i mean um like i was already feeling sick kind of on the ass end of last week and I had like a sore throat uh, and, and like a little bit of a cough and then on Monday I lost my voice completely and it was like it actually hurt to talk it was one of those things and now uh, my voice is uh, <coughs> it doesn't hurt to talk but um, I've got like really hard phlegm at the top of my lungs and at the bottom of my throat kind of thing and it's uh it's painful, but uh, what are you going to do, you know? I'm not, like, anti-medicine at all, but I just, I feel like medicine, for the most part, is a performance enhancer. Like, you take medicine in order to feel better immediately because you have, like, an important meeting or work or sports event or something, so you need that pick-me-up. Uh, you know, you need that boost. And, um, yeah, for me, I just, I feel like it's better to let your body naturally heal. It's kind of like the Super Saiyan thing, you know? Like, you... Uh, you know, whatever doesn't kill us makes us stronger. So it's like, let your body fight off the infection without the help of medicine. So then when you do use medicine, it's probably really effective because your body's not used to it. So, yeah, you know? Uh, that's my suggestion on that. But don't take my advice. That's just me talking about me. But... Yeah, uh, and also, I always get sick when the weather drastically changes. It's just, it's a thing that's been happening forever. And so, it went from closing the door and being jacket weather last week to open the window and put on a t-shirt because it's, it's so hot now. So, <coughs> you know, that's how that shit changed. Um, but anyway, yeah, so... Uh, how's it going, everybody? Thank you for coming in and checking this out. I'm actually filming, or I'm recording this on the Tuesday. Uh, so, like, on Tuesday. So, this, like, I'm releasing this tomorrow. So, I'll be talking about a bunch of random shit, as well as just, like, you know, updates and then other topics as well. So, keep that in mind. And, uh, yeah, and this is the four-minute mark, and I always want to give a shout-out when I get to this point in the video to the sponsors. So thank you everybody who came, who goes over to patreon.com slash Sam. I've got a lot of different bonuses on there from my blog to my behind the scenes footage to most importantly my Japanese language lessons. For any of you people who have ever thought that you wanted to move over to Japan and you want to get a head start and you have money that you want to spend and instead of spending it on Duolingo or some other fucking thing or whatever you can... Get the advice from the hot dad who you like and respect in Japan and 
That's why I made that thing. So feel free to go over there and support me there. So th even a dollar helps because I usually put copyright music in these videos or I say the F word too much. So uh, I, these get censored and not monetized. So thank you, everybody, who goes over to patreon.com slash Sam. The link is down below. And thank you, everybody, who pushes that join button either on this channel or my main channel on TQ Sam. Uh, it's just great. It changes the color of your name in the chat, and let's uh, and it gives you access to this part of the Discord where I, I post a lot of photos of my daily life and stuff. And um, yeah, you know, I just appreciate the support you guys give me over there. And uh, just a reminder, we do do a live stream at the end of each time uh, we upload one of these after a premiere. Also, hello everybody in the premiere chat. How are you doing? Uh, you have breakfast already? What did you guys eat? And yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, don't forget to smash the like button. I try to get at least 50 likes per video, so thank you of that. And make sure your subscribe button and subscribe bell is notified. It's clicked on so you guys get notified when that happens. And follow me on social media, on Discord, whatever. We got a great community of hot dudes over on Discord and dudes and dudettes. So go over there, check that out. All the links for that are down below. I guess question of the day and uh, I don't know. What's the question of the day? I guess question of the day is, if you don't mind me asking, how much money, and just give me a rough ballpark estimate, like how much money do you make every year? And uh, how much money would you like to make? And um, like as like the beginning cap for your like starting to get rich, like what would be like a massive improvement you think? And, uh, yeah, tell me what would you do with that money if you had that money? Uh, I'm just curious because uh, today I just watched a video and I want to talk about. So I'm just curious what you guys would do. What's your current salary? What would you like it to be as a big improvement? And what would you do differently if you got that extra money? Yeah. <clears throat> Let me get some water here. Yeah, I, um, uh, look at Papa Tetsu, he's so sexy. <laughs> yeah, my buddy Papa Tetsu, I haven't, I've talked to him, but I haven't seen him in person in the last four months. <clears throat> All of our mutual friends are like, he's busy at work. Yeah, he's not meeting up with anyone. He's working really hard at this startup company. And he told me, he's like, if I, he's like, I'm going to work, I'm going to bust my ass for a year or two. And, uh. And if it doesn't work out, I'll just get another job. But if this if this startup company really picks up, I will be making a shit ton of money. And so he's working like <clears throat> nine to seven, but usually nine to nine. And uh, he's only got time to basically go home or go out with his coworkers or go out with his new girlfriend. So, yeah, he's not doing the social thing anymore. <clears throat> he told me he even quit his rock climbing gym just because he wants to be you know, he wants to get this company off the ground because if he does, it's like Silicon Valley, you know. It's him and four other guys who are going to get super fucking stupid rich off of this. So, yeah, he's looking for a boost in income. And I can't hate the guy for it. And I don't want to be a selfish person and be like, stop what you're doing and stop the improvement to in order to get more money. <laughs> like, you know, or like in order to make me feel better. You know, like, uh, you know, like come and meet me so we can talk shit or whatever. And it's like, nah, nah, nah. My friend's success is my success. And so I'm I'm rooting for him. Like, uh, as long as he doesn't get hit by a car, uh, he'll be around for a while. So it's fine. But, uh, yeah. <clears throat> um, yeah, look at me in my suit. I don't know why I decided to wear a suit top. Because uh, usually when I wear a suit, I wear the suit pants as well. But... Um, you know, people treat you differently, even though I have a bandana on and this is, I was wearing a mask cause this was peak Corona time. So this is probably like two years ago in case all you people are wondering why I'm wearing a mask. Yeah. I released a video last week <coughs> of, um, an interview I did when I was in Fukuoka of my friend, Ann Chan, who I met through Kat McDowell, who's another YouTube Japan person and uh, when I was doing my podcast I wanted to do a podcast where I interviewed one foreigner in every prefecture and I got to like 17 18 episodes of that and nobody really gave a shit about it and uh, I was just like okay fuck it 
I'll wait till I'm, I get bigger. And that's what everyone does. They wait till they get bigger and then they don't want to pump out regular content anymore like H3, H3 or something. And then they'll just stick to doing their podcast because it's easy. And so I was like, yeah, I'll just stick to that until I eventually get bigger on YouTube and I want to just sell out and just lazily monetize my audience. But uh, anyway, yeah, it was like one of my goals of that podcast was to eventually go and meet each one of those people that I interviewed. And uh, unfortunately, I think like five of those people already went back to whatever countries they were from. But um, yeah, that was nice to see Anne. Uh, Anne actually, she became a Japanese citizen this year. And it's cool. She has a whole 10, uh, I think it's like 10 episode plus series of her whole process on YouTube. Now, take in mind, it is in Japanese, but uh, you probably shouldn't try to be a Japanese citizen unless you can understand her videos, uh, her process. And it's nice because <coughs> there's there's a handful of websites out there telling people how to become legally Japanese, but it's nice to see her talking about it in Japanese and it it really goes to show it's like, hey guys, I'm part of the team. Look at me. I'm talking about becoming one of you in your own language. How badass is that? And it's like, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I don't really have like a straight up topic. I, I mean, I have these lined up topics on my desktop for rants that I wanted to talk about. Like, uh, you know, what kind of Japanese hobbies should you get into when you're in Japan? That was a topic. Uh, the band Ninja Sex Party. Danny, uh, was it Danny Sex Bang and Ninja Brian? I wanted to do a rant on them because I, st I started re-listening to their stuff recently. Uh, I wanted to do a rant on this uh, new, or this old, uh, newish manga by the same guy who made Gantz called Gigant. Not Gigantic, but just Gigant. And, um... Yeah, but but I uh, I don't know. I'll make a rant about that eventually. I haven't finished the series yet, though. I'm only halfway done, and um, but I hopefully will get the rest of the series in the mail later, and that'll be cool. And then I can make a rant about that. And then I wanted to make a rant about Tokyo Vice season one because I already I finished that like a week ago. But um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just gonna freestyle it for this uh, unless I get bored, and then I'll. I'll go and look at my backlog of things that I want to talk about. But, um, yeah, you know, uh, anyway, you guys uh, seem to like that interview. That was really cool. And, uh, yeah, it's so funny. I had, like, three comments pop up being like, he's fat. He's fat. What a fat guy. And I'm like, yeah, I am fat. <laughs> like, I'm, and I'm fatter in that. I'm still fat, but I'm way fatter in that video. So, I was like, it's fine. Isn't it funny how, like, we don't give a shit if somebody is knocking us down for something that, like, we've improved on? <coughs> like, that's why I don't mind putting out videos of me speaking Japanese. Because it's like, if I get grammar wrong, or if I say a word wrong, or if my accent is fucked up in some part, if somebody makes a comment about it, I don't get angry because it's, like, good. Like, people need to point out how to be better. And, um... You know, it's like you don't need to knock each other down. You, but it's good to point out, like, oh, hey, man, like, you know, uh, actually, like, you should have used this grammar point instead of that grammar point. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Okay, yeah, we can do that. Um, but, yeah, yeah, guys. I uh, So, anyway, I don't mind when I put out, uh, you know, like, there's bigger YouTubers out there uh, who I won't name names. But they're afraid of speaking Japanese in their videos because they're worried that they'll get judged um, by their Japanese level. I mean, I bet there's other reasons, but I think that's a big one. And, uh, for me, I'm like, fuck it. Like, this will be nice because every day I try to <coughs> study Japanese more and more, you know, I'm, I'm constantly reading. I constantly have the news playing in the background. Um, you know, like I'm, I'm constantly trying to like watch movies, uh, that are Japanese or dubbed in Japanese. You know, I'm always trying to find, new stuff to have fun in Japanese. I've started talking to my Japanese friends again online more and more recently that like have similar schedules to me. And that's been really fun. You know, it's like, it's like Japanese have a phrase called Kaizen. It's like uh, K-A-I-Z-E-N, Kaizen. And it means consistent small improvements. And so, um, you know, it's, uh, God, my hair is so much fucking bushier than, like, goddamn, like, I, <laughs> wow, my hair is a lot more thick, or, or, well, to be fair, it looks more thick when it's blonde, though, 
But yeah, that looks uh, that looks a lot more thick than the hair that I have right now on my head. Yeah, I, you know, it's just part of getting older. Like, you know, I'm I'm lucky that I'm not going bald. Uh, knock on wood, right? But my hair is definitely thinning. And uh, yeah, that's. Um, but I mean, fuck it. If my hair ever got like the horseshoe bald thing, I'd just Jeff Bezos this and just shave my head until I got tired of it, like my buddy Albo, and then I'll go to Turkey and get hair implants. <laughs> and I'll just be like, whatever, I'll do that. Hopefully I got like a good 10 or 15 years before that happens. But yeah, I love, uh, you know, this is a, a, you know, people always ask me like uh, one of the, one of the schools that I substitute for uh, in Yokohama, the, the main teacher there, he always asks me, you know, he's like, dude, like, you know, uh, I remember when I met you and you had short hair. And he's like, why don't you ever go back to your short hair? And I was like, uh, you know, well, one, <clears throat> I have many reasons for growing out my hair. Like, practically, I do it because I ride a motorcycle a lot. And my hair, when it's short, it just kind of curves forward, you know, like it's very boring. So my hair only looks good when I really gel it up and spike it up, you know. And um, if you're wearing a motorcycle helmet, that really hurts, you know, like pushing your hard uh, crusty hair, you know, into, into your skull and in between the helmet. Right. So, uh, you know, I was like, if I grow my hair out, I don't need to fucking gel it anymore. And it looks cool and it feels good when I'm going through the wind and stuff like that. But, um, you know, also it's just like, uh, there's not a lot of dudes with long hair, you know, there's not a lot of dudes that are fat like me in this country, but there's not many dudes with long hair, especially bleach blonde hair. And, um, yeah, if you're trying to work a regular job, that might be frowned upon. But, uh, you know, like the whole thing is, is like you just do stuff and you own it. Right. And it's like, like, you know, I got tattoos because I was OK with being turned down to go to onsens or bathhouses because I know most of the places that I go to don't give a shit. And um, I don't really care either. And it's funny, those signs were saying like, don't go into the temple dressed like a slut. And uh, even if there's special Pokemon, Pokemon Go, don't come here. Don't bring that Pokemon Go shit here. And uh, yeah, I love it. Like this whole this whole footage is me going to this temple that's outside Fukuoka City. And this whole town is based around that temple. And the temple's huge. It's not just one part of the temple that we wanted to go to. Um, the one part of the temple that we wanted to go to has a giant laying down Buddha on the side of the mountain, but the, the temple's so much more than that. It has so much shit there. It's very, very, very cool. I really dig it. It's awesome. Um, <coughs> but, uh, yeah, anyway, in this, um, in this video, it's, it's very cool. It's very awesome. We had, um, you know, me and Papa Tetsu, we're just going through here and we're enjoying this town. I think this was in January or February that we went. And uh, this was a music bridge where if you tapped the bars a certain way, it would play a song. And uh, I don't know, Papa Tetsu was more enamored with it than me. But um, anyway, I'm getting off topic here describing the video versus what I was trying to talk about. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like my long hair, right? Like for me, it's just like it's kind of like a fuck you to society. And it's like instead of getting a face tattoo, my hair is just long, you know? And... Um, and that's fine. You know, like I, it's funny. Like, uh, sometimes people online will say like, um, uh, I look weird because I have long, uh, they, they, you know, if they can't say the fat comment, they'll say my hair is long and it looks shitty, but, um, you know, it's my hair. Like it's, it's ironic when people say they have a problem with the way, like if I was dressed in a mankini, I totally understand why people would harass me. Cause that shit's just fucking weird. But it's like, you have long blonde hair. You, you fucking suck. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry you are jealous that you can't grow your hair out this long because you just can't or because your job won't let you. But, uh, you know, it's like uh, that train in train spotting, uh, that scene in train spotting when they go to walk outside the train. And he's like, doesn't it make you feel great to be Scottish? And, uh, you know, they're, they're all flip, like Tommy's all flipping out and sick boys like, we know you're getting over Laney, but you don't need to take it out on us. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's like, uh, you know, it, it's like when people hate on other people, it's usually cause they're jealous, you know? And it's like, 
part of you wants to have long hair like me. You you maybe might not admit to it, but you do, and it's okay. Like, you know, um, but it's just like I do it for practical reasons because I don't need to gel my hair. And also, like, you know, everyone goes bald eventually, so you might as well grow your hair out while you can. And if you're working freelance like I do, where it doesn't really matter, where the expectations aren't that high as long as you wear a suit, then you're pretty okay. Um, and also, I just dye my hair blonde because uh, I'm a foreigner. And I don't mind if I'm going to be treated like a foreigner, despite how Japanese I try to dress, then I'll just, uh, you know, I'm going to go full foreigner here, you know? And uh, I'm okay with it. You just got to own it, you know? When you want to be different, you just got to own it. And uh, I, when you're a foreigner in Japan, you're not you're expected to confer, con, uh, conform to a certain to a certain degree, you know, like you, to a certain point, you're expected to conform. But <coughs> for the most part, you know, as long as you can do the job and you're around people who appreciate you, then you'll be fine. You know, I remember I went to this one uh, audition for a TV show. And this guy came in with really long hair. It was tied up in like a man bun. Uh, and uh, he had a long beard. He was like a skinny kind of like yoga looking dude. And they were like, you know, for this part, you're going to have to shave that beard. And he's like, I told my agent specifically uh, whenever he's going to send me to an audition that I will not shave my beard. And um, and yeah, and then they were and he was like, he's like, so you're telling me I'll have to do it. And they're like, yeah. And he's like, OK, fuck that. You know, uh, and he, he like didn't say thank you or like sorry for wasting your time. He's just like, yeah, fuck that. And he left. <laughs> he left the interview. And I was like, yep. Uh, well, I mean, to be fair, when there's a group interview, you should be a little bit skeptic in general when it comes to a job. Uh, but I mean, that was an audition, though, so it was fine. Um, yeah, I guess kids were going on like a school trip or something here when this happened. <coughs> it makes sense. This place is cool and it's not super touristy, you know. But it's just, it's funny how, like, all these regular houses are just around here, you know? That's badass. Um, yeah, as for other stuff, other stuff. <coughs> I don't know. That That's just me going on a tangent about my hair. <laughs> yeah, I, um, goddamn, like, I wanted to go out. Today I was supposed to go out because I just finished my, um, what is it, you know, I, uh, I just finished my last dose of Ozempic and um, it's funny because each time I inject myself with Ozempic I have a uh, I have a, a, a water bottle that they told me just like each time you get done with your needle your needle comes in this little packet and so that it stays in that packet after you use it and so so that way like it doesn't accidentally inject anybody as long as you put it back in the packet and then you're supposed to put it into like a pet bottle and then you can you don't throw it away. You give it to uh, one of the people at the hospital and they'll throw it away. And today was my last Ozempic shot. And um, yeah, and uh, this week, hopefully I'll be switching to Wegovi. And uh, I'm very proud to announce that I'm 166 kilos right now. So and that's probably in part to being sick and not wanting to eat a lot to begin with. But <coughs> I'm happy to say that um, I've been sticking to the intermittent fasting though uh, it was probably Servo or one of you guys that was just like do intermittent fasting and um, I think the secret is it's just you gotta find something that works for you right and if you're gonna do intermittent fasting you gotta find like some food that you really really enjoy eating that you can make varieties of like different styles of and then on top of that that you can just make over and over and over again, you know? And that was really fun. I've basically made this, like, rice bowl that... Oh, look at these people. They were so nice. I made this rice bowl that's basically just, like, I call it my stamina rice bowl where I just... It's a bunch of vegetables and a bunch of protein and a bunch of rice. And uh, I'll have, like, a fruit or two with that. And then, um, yeah, so that covers my fruit, my veggies, my protein, like, my meat, my eggs... And then afterwards, um, I have my, well, I have my dairy before that when I drink my coffee in the morning. And uh, if I'm still hungry, I'll have maybe like an hour or two later if I'm still hungry, which if I filled up the rice bowl correctly enough, that should keep me satiated for the whole day. But if I'm still hungry afterwards, I have natto 
and I have uh, I have apples in my fridge. So more protein and more fiber and more vitamins and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's it's good. It's good because um, you know if I still need a meal afterwards, then I'll just I have kimchi and I have. Uh, pork in my fridge so I'll just make a stir fry and that one's so easy I don't know if you guys have ever made a uh, stir fry pork but <clears throat> kimchi pork but it's really simple you just cook the kimchi till it's brown and then throw ki- throw the ki- no you cook the pork until it's brown then you throw the kimchi in there you stir it up and then you just cover the frying pan and uh, let it sit for a while and it's really good and it's healthy for you yeah, this is this must have been an all girls school or something. Where where are the boys? God, this was so long ago. I don't remember. I wonder if they were from a local school or if they were traveling to Fukuoka. But they were so nice. They saw the cameras and they're like, "Are you on YouTube?" And they're like, "Yeah, yeah." I was like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Oh, hi, YouTube." And uh, they were surprised. I told them I knew who Hikaikin was, and Hikaikin's like basically the PewDiePie of Japan, and uh, he's a chill dude. He's pretty cool. And uh, I've met him once, actually, at the YouTube Hanami, and he was fucking, he was badass. But, yeah, look at this. This is just, oh, this is so fucking cool. I love, in Japan, they have two kinds of Buddha. They got the one with the beads on his head that's, like, got a cone. And then they got the big, fat, round Buddha. And he's just, like, so proportionately, like, good-looking. I love it. He's always got the baggy robes and the stomach just hanging out. But he's also got, like, a fat, round face, too. And he's got the earlobes. I don't know what the earlobe... Uh, the fat earlobes represent, <laughs> but it must be something, right? Um, but anyway, anyway, yeah, I just, uh, yeah, I've been doing that and that's been really helping me out. And like, guys, I, you know, this might be TMI, but it's just when you get older, you really notice when you have bad shits. I mean, like me, I, I, if I start feeling cold, like I'm like, oh man, it's cold outside. When I see my phone says that it's just a normal temperature where I shouldn't feel cold. Uh, I know that I need to take a shit. Oh yeah, and look, people have rubbed this guy's belly so much that it started like rubbing off the original whatever was on there, the original metal or paint, and that's cool. You rub the Buddha belly for good luck. Yep. <coughs> but um, yeah. Anyway, uh, talking about food and all that stuff, but just like eating all this stuff I've been eating this like this constantly for about like three weeks or so and um but I noticed I wasn't getting as much progress as I wanted because I was eating whatever I wanted when I went outside because like my whole rule is I got to eat healthy when I'm at home and it's easier for me to eat healthy when I'm at home because I can cook whatever the fuck I want um but yeah, it's like when I went outside, I was eating whatever I wanted, you know, and uh, especially on the weekends. So I was like, shit. And also you got, you know, friend obligations where you're going with people to go to Izakaya's or whatever. And like, you know, they're eating bad food. So you're like, oh, well, if they're eating it, I can eat it too. And it's just like, it's not good. It's not bueno, you know. And uh, so I went out of my way to go on Amazon and I bought myself one of those Japanese uh, bento boxes. So from now on, if I have to go anywhere, I've, I've found like the good sweet spot for me is 1 30. Um, yeah, so I sleep from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. And thanks to Pokemon Sleep, that really helps me. Uh, <coughs> thanks to Pokemon Sleep, I really, it helps me maintain that sleep schedule and, and kind of forces me to get eight hours of sleep. It's not an, a solid eight hours, but. At least it is eight hours of rest. And um, and yeah, and then it's just like have my coffee, have my multivitamins. And then I was waiting till 12. But I noticed if I wait till 1.30 and then I have that giant rice bowl, I'm good for the rest of the day. And if I'm not good, then I'll just eat this stuff in here. And like and the fun thing is, is like I've been fucking around. Like I don't care. Like I'll have like a cup, like a tiny cup of ice cream or something. Or I'll have a handful of M&M's. And I'll just be like, yeah, like, it doesn't matter. Like, it's still such a calorie deficit that, and it's like, it's just basically dairy and preservatives, right? So I'm still losing weight, uh, even when I don't have to exercise. And I've been walking around a lot more too, though, um, because it's warmer. And also I'm still trying to keep up with the uh, lift 10 kilos or like lift a a set of, uh, six kilos, um, you know, six, six, uh, (coughs) do 10 reps of those each time I get up when I'm at my house, you know? 
And so that's been nice. Um, but yeah, yeah, just been doing that. And um, yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I think that this is moving like positively forward in the right direction. Like, I feel like um, the number one thing is just finding something that's sust- like sustainable that you can do consistently and then just adding on top of that, you know? I think if you can do that, you're, you know, you're good for the most part. And so, um, you know, I think that's, uh, that's the way to go. So it's just like, I don't know, man, like, um, like I ran into, uh, I ran into an old friend of mine that I hadn't seen in a while, uh, when I was out filming the other day and he was like, you're fat, you're going to die. And, uh, (laughs) I appreciated his bluntness, but, um, you know, instead of telling him all this stuff, I was like, Hey man, you know, just check in on me in December you know, see, see how I look then, you know, like it, talk is talk, right. But let's, you know, judge me by my actions by the end of the year and see if I actually got better or not. Because, um, I think that everything needs to go in waves, you know, like, um, like my whole philosophy on life is that, uh, beating yourself up is, it's kind of pointless, right? Cause like you could be, you know, you are your worst coach or you are your best coach or your worst hater, you know? But at the end of the day, like hating on yourself and thinking you're a piece of shit, it's not going to add up to anything. Like, you know, you need to put in the like it it might you might not be putting in as much work as a guy who goes to the gym uh, like fi- like I have a friend in Vietnam right now and he goes to the gym uh, sometimes twice a day. But he usually goes at least once a day and he'll do two hours of like a full body workout and uh, I'm not doing that, <clears throat> but so like, if I was comparing myself to him, and yeah, I'm a piece of shit. But I gotta remind myself, like when I look at his stuff, that he used to be a fat guy, and he started out doing basic stuff first, and then after a while, he like started adding stuff to the stuff that he was doing. Right, like he just added stuff onto the stuff that was working. And I think in the past, like whenever I've tried to do stuff, I've tried to do it too hard. And then I either get burnt out, you know, like I noticed um, when I first moved into this apartment, I tried doing a really hard workout, uh, not two days in a row, but two times in one week. And uh, my body was not having that. And I got horribly sick (laughs) because of that. Like, I think I put too much intense stress on my body (coughs) in such a short period of time that like my immune system went low because of that. And I got horribly sick for about a week after that. And so, you know, like, um, and also you got to remember that like to build a new habit takes at least three months, right? Three months of mostly consistency, right? And so if you can do it for three months, then I think that's a good time to start adding on top of shit. But, um, (coughs) I mean, it's kind of like what Tim Ferriss said in his, um, in his four hour work week, you know, it's like in his four hour work, not four hour work week, four hour body in his book, the four hour body. He's like, if you look at what people normally eat throughout the week, most of us eat 80% of the time. We usually eat the same shit. And so if you can just find something that you like that you can eat most of the time, that's healthy for you. That's the first major step, you know? And, um, it's taking me a lot of time to go through this of like trying a lot of trial and error to finally find, I think what works for me right now. And, um, the, the fun thing is though, is that like, I remember when I I tried to be a vegan for two months, when I first moved here, uh, I was just eating the same kind of bland food every day. And, uh, you can only do so much of that before you get tired and angry (laughs) and just stop. And, um, you know, uh, yeah. And like, but, but the thing is, is like that food didn't taste that good. You know, like it didn't taste good. There wasn't any variety with it. And like with this one, there's variety and it, it tastes fucking, it hits all the spots, you know, it hits the umami, it hits the nutrients, it hits the, the carb, you know, it hits like the, the hardiness, you know, it hits the satisfaction on all fronts and, um, and it's not hard to make. It's not complicated at all. Um, I don't know. It, it's just, it's funny because it's like people always say like dietitians or whatever people online, they're like, you need to eat this to have a balanced whatever, right? But, um, you know, people usually don't want to do that. They're turned off by that because they're like, well, I don't like anything that has that. But, like, for my current uh, eating schedule right now, it's like there's olive oil 
and then I throw chopped garlic in there and chopped chilies in there and I let those kind of caramelize a little bit and then I'll throw in an onion and a mushroom because those are the tougher ones and then usually it's like a green onion because they're less tardy than uh, other onions <laughs> and then I'll throw in um, uh, shiitake mushrooms because those are my favorite mushrooms texture wise I mean the funny thing is is like I've gone through a bunch of different stir fries to get to this one stir fry I really like you know at the moment and um, and then I just have a rule that I put not just a little bit but I put like a whole batch like a whole bag of leafy greens in there so it's either spinach or mustard spinach or bok choy uh, or whatever you know like the great thing is is I can mix and match so it's like instead of peppers I can use or instead of onion green onions <coughs> I can mix it up with green peppers um, you know I don't I try not to make this westerny so um, but I do use olive oil extra virgin olive oil thank you wing bull by the way for turning me on to good olive oil I looked it up online and it's like you know people say look out olive oil burns at a really high temp or a really low temperature but the thing is is that unless you're keeping your skillet on for like 15 minutes while the oil is there you're not gonna have to worry about that you know like you, you know unless you're really making your walk super super hot <coughs> you don't need to worry about that so I've got the olive oil and um <sighs> God, I looked this up on, on ChatGPT a while ago, or not a while ago, like a week ago or something, and it was like the chilies and the garlic really help boost immunity. Like, they, they do all this good shit, right? And then fungi, the fungus, the mushrooms, they also do the good shit too, right? And um, and then, like, the leafy greens are just, like, super macro, micronutrient power powerhouses, right? And uh, so I'll cook all that. I don't usually put another frying pan over the wok, so... It can get a little bit watery and like uh, it doesn't get dry too quickly. And then in a separate fly frying pan, I'll cook beef or pork or whatever. And I'll cook that separately just because I like the crunch, the kind of dryness crunch that comes with meat when you don't mix it with stuff. And um, then when both of those are done, I just throw the meat on top of the veggies. And when I cook the meat, I, I don't use, I, for all of this, I don't use any salt. I just use black pepper and peppercorn pepper and uh for the meat and then i'll put that on top of the veggies and i have a bunch of microwave packets of rice and you just throw that in the fucking in the microwave for like two minutes or whatever and that cooks it so i put that at the bottom of the bowl and then i put the veggies and then the meat there and then i cook two eggs separately too because protein is super good for your body despite whatever people might say about protein being bad or eggs being bad for you protein in general is good for you and I mean like the way I look at it is like okay how much how much rice are you eating per day how much bread are you eating per day like how much not immediately good shit that goes directly into your bloodstream to help you are you eating every day and if you're eating like you know uh, you know candies or ice cream or you're like eating way more bread or way more rice because I only use these tiny packets of rice that are microwavable right <clears throat> that are quite small compared to like if you went to a Japanese restaurant for the amount of rice they give you and um, you know and so it's like you know I know people say that eggs are uh, pretty gnarly um, but I think overall it's like I, I like cooking my eggs where they're what do you call them? They're sunny side up or whatever. <coughs> and um, and so the yolk is still pretty soft. And so when I put that on top of my uh, when I put that on top of my fucking um, on my rice bowl, the egg yolk breaks and then it just kind of sinks down to the bottom of it. It makes everything very creamy and very satiable. And I really, really love that about that. And um, yeah, in order to satiate my sweet tooth, I usually have like a Mekon or two with this. And uh, yeah, I haven't had to drink juice in a while because like you, once you start, you know, like if you really, really, I noticed that like, you know, people always say like, if you do a water fast, uh, it'll reset everything and things that don't taste good to you will, will taste good afterwards. And that's true, but water fast suck ass. <laughs> like the whole point of this stuff is that it really sucks at the beginning. Like weaning, like the, the whole thing that sucks about preservative filled food 
like you know highly sugar or highly salted foods is that like they taste really good and then if you get used to eating that all the time that's all that you really crave and uh even though your body could use the other shit like that's why so many people eat fast food that's why i ate fast food for so many years you know it's like your body is like ah, oh, i can eat this other shit but it doesn't taste good as the other stuff and um you know but like if you can get to that point i don't know if you have to go as hardcore as a water fast but if you can get to that point where you're like oh instead of juice i can have an orange and that will like bring my my nerves down enough like that's that's a pretty good part part to be at you know and uh you know um i remember after three weeks after i did my water fast I got like really bad headaches when I, uh, when I, you know, like after my three week water fast, I didn't plan on quitting soda. And so I went to this sushi place to break my fast and, um, and, uh, they had a Mountain Dew machine outside and I was like, I love Mountain Dew. Let's get Mountain Dew. And I drank it and it was the worst thing ever. Uh, it just felt like somebody had opened up my head and sprayed bleach all over my head. I got like a massive, like sharp, I, my, migraines last for a long time, right? So I wouldn't say migraine, but I got like a very very painful instant headache from that and I, I took like three sips and I was just like yeah fuck that and I poured the rest of it out and then I went in to get sushi but um you know I feel like uh a lot of people it's hard for them to get to that point where their body rejects the bad food or the bad drinks so they never really you know like since it's very hard the hardest part of changing is the first part they don't want to do that you know or like they <coughs> they think it's too hard so they don't they don't they, they just stop trying and I know because that happened to me right so um but yeah I'm just like I don't know I'm really I'm really happy to go in this next direction where I can go to um where I'm going to be able to go to the hospital and be like yeah uh I'm not diabetic so I've been paying out of pocket for Ozempic for the last couple months and so uh I'd like to switch over to Wegovi because I'm fat and that should cover, be covered under the insurance and uh, paying less for that because Wegovi is practically the same thing as Ozempic and it really has curved my appetite quite a bit. But, um, you know, that's not enough. It's, it's just like ADHD meds. Like, unless you're trying to build up good habits, like, you know, like Ozempic, ADHD meds or whatever, like they're, they're just a crutch, you know, to help you start walking again but like you got to put in the effort you got to put in the actual exercise of exercising your legs and getting up on time and making an effort every day to do that and stuff and um and yeah i mean like the same thing with this stuff it's like it suppresses your appetite but that doesn't matter if you're eating crap food all the time right and so um i don't know it's just uh it's nice and like you know the again like i think this is why it's very important to keep a journal <coughs> Uh, I think anybody who's ever been depressed, I've said this multiple times during my live streams and during my rants, but just keep a journal, guys. Keep an analog journal. And uh, I told my buddy in Kanagawa to keep a journal, and he's like, no, man, if I wrote down all my dark thoughts, uh, then, like, no way, dude. And uh, I was like, well, don't write. If you have dark thoughts, maybe you should go to a therapist. But you don't need to write down your dark thoughts. Just, like, keep it as a data tracker, like, for mine. I keep it as a data tracker for the food I eat, my sleep schedule, my mood that day, and then, like, all the stuff that I did, you know, during that day. So, like, I, I feel accomplished. I feel like I got some shit done. Um, you know, and then also, like, I carry around a Polaroid camera with me, with me now. So when I go out and I meet people or something or I do, a like, a YouTube project, I'll take a picture. I originally bought this Polaroid camera... <coughs> So I could take pictures each time I go and film a YouTube project so I could put it on my closet door. So I could see at the end of the year, like, all these videos that I had made. But then I just, I, I would always forget the fucking Polaroid camera when I went out. And I'm like, okay, fuck it, I don't use it anymore. But now I use it, not for when I'm at home, on the days where I stay home for the whole day. But, like, when I go out, <laughs> I'll take a commemorative picture of that day. And it's, it's really fun, you know? Like, it's cool to see your progress and see the people that you met up with that day um like i remember the last day of my diabetes clinic you know even though i'm not diabetic i had to go to a diabetes clinic to get this ozempic shit and the nurses there were so nice to me they were always so nice i think it's just because i was maybe the only foreigner there i saw another white guy there one time but um yeah every single time i went for the most part it was only japanese people so 
maybe they just took a liking to me. I think also they told me that they did have other foreigners there, but they didn't speak Japanese. So uh, it was really hard to communicate with them. So I think maybe they appreciated that I spoke Japanese. But anyway, on my last day, I told them, I was like, I have a journal. I always take a picture uh, for each one of those days that, I, you know, I go outside and I'd like to take my journal picture today of you two. And so I have this nice uh, and they were like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. And so I have like my last day of that clinic, me taking a picture of these two nurses. And it was just. It was so cute, so adorable, you know? And, uh, you know, like, uh, I talked to my other buddy in Kanagawa, and he, he did, like, kind of an Instagram private friends-only journal. But the thing with that is that, like, I don't know about you guys, but I don't check my old, like, you know, my old posts or whatever. Like, uh, like especially if it's, like, something online that I did that I'm like, oh, I'm going to – I don't really review that that much. But with a journal that I have to take out and open every day to write a new page in – I'm more likely to peruse the past pages to see like, oh shit, I forgot. <coughs> I said I was going to do this that month. Oh yeah. And it's like, oh hey, that one week it rained all week. I wonder if I felt good or if I felt shitty that week. Like, again, I think if depressed people just kept a journal of like, especially how they felt every day and they start seeing the data in front of them, they're like, oh shit, okay, yeah, maybe I should change, maybe I should change it up a bit, you know? Hmm. Yeah, and I, um, you know, like, uh, the doctor who gave me Ozempic, too, he was like, you should weigh yourself every day, um, you should take a picture of yourself every day, and you should take a picture of the food that you eat every day, and, uh, I did that for the most part, but I think I, I'm gonna skip it for right now, I just wanna focus on being healthy, so, I will still, I like the idea of a food journal, though, because if you keep it, um, on your phone, then, uh, like, especially if you keep it in an app like I use, that's like a food journal thing. You can, it, t it shows the time. As long as you take the picture and you upload it the same time you're about to eat, it shows you when you ate that day. And, uh, my only thing though, is that like, I sometimes forget to take pictures of the snacks I eat too, though. Um, but yeah, I think that the scale is, uh, it's good at first to get you into the habit of getting on the scale again, but I think I'm going to change it to once a week though. And, uh, I'm going to change it to when I take my shot, my Ozempic shot at the beginning of the week. Um, so that way it's just like I can get on and then I can just adjust things accordingly. And like, again, this is like, thanks to the journal, like the journal, I was like, oh shit, like I actually ate a lot worse than I thought I did on Saturday or, or it's like, oh, my friend came from out of town and I forgot that we went to an izakaya like two nights this week. Yeah. Like no wonder I ate so much food and I had a lot of beer. Like, so no wonder I didn't lose that much weight or like maybe I gained more, you know? And, um, so it's just, it's better to keep track of your progress. It's good for finances and stuff too. Um, <coughs> I have a separate journal, uh, for any of you guys who are self-employed-ish kind of like me um uh you know there are apps where you can take pictures of your receipts and uh i just have a memo app where i just keep i take a picture of every physical receipt and i put it there and i just clump it together in one month but uh, i also have a physical notebook that keeps track of all of my receipts uh throughout the week and um you know people say you could use credit cards and stuff for that but uh, you know, the way that the credit card companies are set up here, it's very annoying. Like they'll write down the location or like an abbreviation of the name of the place that you bought the stuff from versus the actual fucking huge name or whatever. And so it's really annoying to get that electronic statement. So, uh, like, you know, I still like for a lot of purchases, I still use a credit card just to get those points. Right. But um, and it's so funny. I'm actually talking to, I'm talking about this right now. And it says like right now on TV, they're talking about receipts too. Like, uh, <coughs> this one, uh, this one app they're talking about where you, if you take a picture of your receipt, you get one yen. Um, that's pretty cool. But, uh, but anyway, yeah, it's just like, um, the point is, is that like, uh, you should keep, if you're, if you're get, if you're able to get a physical invoice or copy of your receipt, you should do it and keep it in your uh, notebooks because it's just, it's a good habit to have. And also like, if you're, you know, if you're going out a lot and you're like, oh man, how much money did I spend or whatever, <coughs> especially if you're trying to write stuff off, um, it's just a lot easier to go to like, oh, what was that date? 
and then you just see your taped up fucking receipts in there, and there you're good to go. God, look how chunky I am in this. Fuck. This is at least, like, probably 178, maybe 180 kilos right here. I look like a big chunky boy. But that's cool. Um... But yeah, sorry about that. I'm just blowing my nose here. Um, but yeah, it's just like, I think a lot of people's problems could be solved if they actually just kept track of themselves, you know, and see how well they're doing. Um, but yeah, anyway, I, I don't know. I just, uh, I mean, like, this is like one of the fun things about like being an online personality, influencer, creator, whatever you want to call it, is that like, uh, <coughs> I've been reading this book. And I showed it on stream already once, and uh, I wonder if they have an English version of this. I don't think they do, but uh, I really like it so far, and I'm only, what, like maybe a fifth of the way through the book. How many pages does, does this have? It has about 228 pages, and I've been slowly picking away at it each time I ride the train, uh, and uh, I only started reading it like about a week or two ago, so I'm only on page 55 right now, but... I love this book because it has chapters and then it has sub chapters and I could tell this guy just had a blog and he just kind of copy pasted that blog <laughs> into this book but um, it's like kind of like a way it's a book about being more productive and it's from 2005 or 2006 <laughs> and um, I don't know I really uh, I really like the book so far like I've already been, like each time I finish a chapter I write down notes about that <laughs> that chapter but um you know it's basically like uh you know you the setup is like setting up the environment around you and then like flow and stock and that's like keeping track of all of your notes and everything and like processing your notes and then like number three is like creating a database of your notes and your ideas and number four is like how to get new ideas uh like i'm guessing this is more for like entrepreneurs or something too though like, this is, like, how to get new ideas, how to, like, just new ideas about anything in general. It could be, like, you know, um, talking to people or, uh, or you know, like, going on a date or something. I don't know. And then, like, the, there's, like, time management and then there's decision making and all this shit. And uh, I don't know. It's really interesting. But, like, you know, some of the techniques I learned from this so far is, like, and I always write these down at the end of the chapters. Like, um, it's, like, instead of uh, typing in a digital note into your phone just carry around a pen and paper with you and if that's too bulky for you you don't want to carry around a whole like uh, a whole like notebook or pen with you just have uh, a bunch of tiny little <coughs> business card sized memos in a business card holder and have like a little pen that's like attached to like your phone or whatever that you can just break out and write down stuff and like use a whole card for an idea and then just like process it later and I was like, okay, that's cool. I like that. That's interesting. Um, yeah, you know. And then, uh, what is this? Um, it, like, it also talks about how short, uh, what do you call it? Like, short-term memory um, usually isn't good for a lot of people. People say online that it's normal uh, to have good short-term memory. But the fact of the matter is... Uh, a lot of us, when it comes to short-term memory ideas, we forget a lot of them. Like, we'll have a bunch of ideas pop in our head at once throughout the day. And if we don't write it, and like, but it's okay. We don't need to worry about remembering them, but we should write them down. And that's why it's like, don't worry about trying to remember all this shit. Just write it down for later. You know, write it down as a memo to yourself for later, you know? And yeah, there's a bunch of, uh, and like, there's a lot like this one too. It's like, if you don't have, uh, if you can't write down your stuff, make a voice memo for your shit and then make it into a note later, you know, um, like make it into a physical note later. And, uh, if you're, I love it too. They even have a part in this book where it's like, if you're afraid of, uh, looking like an idiot while talking to a microphone while walking, uh, cause they, they, he says he encourages that, like you should do don't do a voice memo at home for your ideas. Do it while you're walking around. And um, 
yeah, I should be, I should be making these rants while I'm walking around instead of sitting down and just being sedentary at home. But you know, um, eh. <laughs> I should have gone out today. I didn't go out today, so eh. <coughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like the plan is, is that it's getting warmer now. There's no more excuse. I got to get out of the house and film these rants, even if it's just me sitting at a park bench talking to you guys for an hour. At least it's outside, right? But um, yeah, I love it how it said it's like walk and talk. When you walk, the creativity just flows better. And it's like if you're afraid of looking like an idiot, just turn on your voice recorder on your phone and just start walking and look like you're talking into your phone instead. But uh, I don't know. I don't know if anyone else. This is 2006 or 2005, so this is before iPhones. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's just funny. But anyway, it's just like... Um, the, the whole reason I brought up this book is because there's a page on um, page 30. Uh, there's a there's a part on page 30 and it says, share your ideas through a blog. And I really like that. And it's just like, yeah, man, like you have, um, it's like anything that you encounter, instead of like mass spamming your friends on like an email, uh, like an email list or something, all you got to do it's just start a blog and then tell your friends about it and then let your friends contribute to it. And, uh, and I think that's like, um, you know, that's the one thing I really like about my Discord is that, you know, since last year, I was just like, you know what? I always find all this cool shit online and half the time it's not pop culture shit. It's just like news, like either um, like financial news or like... Uh, you know, video, like, you know, like, cool stuff, like, how to edit a video a certain way, or, um, like, cool, interesting places, or, like, interesting new YouTubers or something, or, like, a cool book I found or something, and I like it how my Discord's basically become that. It's become, like, a place where you can check in, and there's all this new kind of information there for people that want to like you know we have a section in the discord for people who want who want to live in japan that like have questions there uh, we have a, a section for like investing we have a section for books that i just updated today about like all the cool different libraries in japan or in tokyo um <coughs> uh what else we've got a, a, a section on the discord too where if you're doing online shit and you're just starting out you can promote your stuff there to the other people on the discord Um, yeah, and then we got the private section of the Discord for all of you guys who are either Twitch subs or patrons on patreon.com or if you guys are members here on this YouTube channel or my TQ Sam channel. But, um, yeah, I mean, like, we've got a lot of cool information there. And, like, two of my favorite parts on the Discord are we've got the Ultra Giga Chad section which is basically just about becoming a better man it's like it's like andrew tate but without like the 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 all the rolexes getting <laughs> like you know taken by uh police because we don't have rolexes we're not we're not like monetizing this self-help stuff we're just sharing it and um i really like that section though because it just it it promotes like education it promotes like learning and sharing that learning with others and you know just being a better guy not just for you but for the people around you and stuff and like for the people that just want to like you know uh just laugh and circle jerk at like pop culture shit we have a section for that too called the toxic masculinity dojo where you can put clips of like you know jackie chan fights or whatever there and you know like archer or like invincible or whatever you can put that there and so there's a place for everything in the discord but the whole point is is like when you get information that can like help you like become better and you think it could benefit your friends and like share that information you know like let like you know like if you found a way for example like it's like oh you found like a way to get like cheap plane tickets or something and it's through this deal like why would you keep that information to yourself like let your friends know about it too kind of thing you know and um I don't know. I think that's the that's the cool thing about this community is that like we're not that big. I don't get as many views as before, but it's fine, you know, because it's like <coughs> like I had Servo, Servo, one of my long term viewers uh, here on my channel. 
he posted on my Discord like a week ago being like, Dad, I'm not going to lie. The videos recently, they kind of suck. They're not that good. They've lost a lot of chutzpah and energy that they used to have. And I'm like, well, you know, that's fine. But why don't you give me specifics on what you miss? And, uh, you know, like, tell me. And he's like, well, you, you're not on your motorcycle anymore for the rants. And I was like, I thought you watch almost every rant. And he's like, I do. And I'm like, well, I've said multiple times in my rants that it's winter, you know. And and I'm not going outside on the motorcycle for this winter. And uh, if I want to be lazy, I'm just going to put out a lazy video. <coughs> And, um, you know, he, uh, he gets it, but it's just like, um, you know, it's like one of those things where I'm like, I'm okay if people don't like the video because I know there's other better videos coming out and it's like, I don't need to hit this perfectionist kind of like mindset when I pump out a video. Like this is more about my interaction with you guys and like kind of growing this cool, like positive community of like people that are interested in Japan and like uh, based hot dad takes <laughs> about being in Japan, you know, and um, and just like living life uh, by your terms kind of thing, and, um, and you know, and like not not taking the negative people too seriously, you know. Um, I think that uh, like um, I've mentioned his name before, Triple, <laughs> Triple. I know you're watching this, but like uh, I have a viewer of mine that I like to refer to when talking about this but like triple was a viewer of mine who was like is a quite a negative guy when he first joined my community but i liked him so like i didn't really uh i didn't really reprimand him that much when he would just be kind of sad in my uh in my discord but um you know eventually he started watching the videos more and interacting with the community more and he got something from this community that he hadn't gotten from other people up until this point and he felt you know, like, he felt positive. He felt like he could do something. And uh, even, like, you know, recently, like, a, a month or maybe a couple months ago, uh, he was just thinking about flat-out quitting his job because they asked him to move to a new school because he was one of the best teachers or whatever, and he didn't want to He didn't want to work at a new school. It was too far away from his place. And uh, and he was, so, he was really pissed off, and he was venting about it on the Discord. And I was like, dude... If you're going to quit the job anyway, you might as well <coughs> talk to your boss and let them know how you feel. And, um, you know, at least that way your boss understands why you're quitting. And, like, if your boss hasn't been a piece of shit to you up until this point, then, you know, and you're going to quit anyway, then you might, you you know, you deserve to have a heart to heart with them and tell them, like, why you would rather quit than do that. And... You know, he came back to the Discord and he's like, okay, uh, I made a compromise with them that uh, he's going to be there for three months to help, like, train the new teachers or something, and then he'll move on to the other part. And I'm like, fuck yeah, dude. Like, you know, like, we directly influenced that guy to, like, be better, you know? And, like, um, I don't know, man. Like, being a foreigner in a, in a, in a country that's not your own, it's easy to fall into a group of, like, just people that are like are just not not happy you know and um it's it's i think it's very important to be consistent with like the people that you want around you to be consistent with your goals and what you want to do and um yeah i think that uh at the end of the day like i can't obviously be a direct friend to everybody who becomes a member of my community and of my youtube stuff but i can at least like you know have this discord full of cool advice and helpful hints and tips and other people that want to help other people too that can come there because like you know i follow a lot of twitch streamers and other japan youtubers and i'm part of their discords too and it's just like it's usually just pop culture bullshit like anime or like you know self promo clips or something like it's not a lot of like you know i don't this doesn't need to be like a self-help guru thing i don't plan on getting money from that it's just, um, I, I want people that want to be part of a community that's like wanting to build them up versus tearing others down. Like I, I want them to, I want them to feel like that. You know, I want them to feel, uh, like, you know, like, oh man, like, uh, like <coughs> I'm thinking about quitting my job. What should I do? Kind of thing. And like have some people to give you some solid takes. I mean, that's the great thing about having something like that versus like being on Reddit 
or whatever. You're getting all this information from random people who you don't know if they're just fucking with you or giving you genuine advice, but you join my Discord and it's all just like good dudes wanting to help out each other. Like you see that meme where it's like some kid is asking about like how to work out or something. And uh, instead of like people giving him like a cynical, sarcastic, like mean answer, it's all these like bodybuilders like giving him like, you know, like uh, giving him actual solid advice and, uh, you know, understanding that he's a beginner and stuff and like helping him grow. And um, I'd like to think that my Discord's like that, you know? Like, my community in general is like that. And, um, I don't know. Look at that Zelda foot. It's so cool. And I don't know. I'm just, I'm so proud of you guys because it's like, even, uh, God, I released a, a short on this channel like a week or two ago. And, uh, it was something about like me reading a hater comment. And, uh, before I could even comment on the hater comment on that video, <coughs> you guys beat me to it. And you're like, when somebody hates on somebody else, especially like loudly and publicly, that says way more about that person than it does about the person they're hating. And um, I don't think a lot of people understand that. And it's like, that was something I said during my streams a bunch of times. And like, it, 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 it came through to you guys. Like you actually, like, I didn't even need to say it. Like you guys said that. So it's like, you can enact positive change uh, to help people and um, it doesn't need to be like an MPO changing you know saving Africa kind of bullshit but it's just uh, it's like you've got ideas man you want to share them you know it's like uh, you got hobbies you want to share them you know and it's just like um, uh, like at the end of the day it's just about like finding out what your goals are and then trying to find people that want like I have a friend who's doing an AI thing right now he's making an AI company <coughs> I don't really know shit about AI aside from the shit I see on YouTube. And I don't know really much about the tech world, but my buddy, he'll like send me these like, you know, one to 10 minute messages giving me updates about him building up his company and stuff. And like, even though I don't really understand what the fuck he's talking about, like, I'm happy to support him. And like, uh, he showed me the other day, he's like, oh, dude, another guy has like the same fucking idea as me. And he already raised all this money. And I'm like, yeah, that guy's a fucking... That guy's a fucking douchebag, though. Fuck that guy. Like, you know, that guy wears baseball caps inside. What a douche, you know? Screw that guy. Like, I bet you'll find something else. And uh, then he found something else to, like, help him kind of fund his project. And I'm like, that's so badass. I'm so happy for him, you know? And anyway, I don't know. That was just, uh, like, even though I couldn't really contribute skill-wise, like, I was there to gas my boy up to, like, uh, you know, you know, encourage him to do better and that like i'm i'm like yeah man fuck yeah do it dude you know and um yeah we just need more bros more bros in this life i guess and more zelda feet or whatever the hell this is <coughs> but anyway yeah this is already over an hour and i've been rambling too long and i need to export this and uh, make the thumbnail for it and upload it before i do anything else today so yeah do me a favor guys if you made it this far Secret comment of the day is Zelda feet. Type in Zelda feet uh, or Zelda's feet at the bottom to let me know you made it this far. And uh, did you smash the like button? Fuck yeah, I bet you did. And uh, don't forget, we do a live stream after this. So is anybody still in the premiere chat after all this time? Say hi if you're still in the premiere chat. Hello. Thank you guys always for coming here for the premieres. I love talking to you guys in the chat while we're doing this. And... Um, and yeah, you know, uh, anyway, thank you guys always. And remember, if you're watching this on a day that I didn't like, or that it was after my live stream, the live stream links are always in the comment section. And uh, remember, at the end of these videos, there's a playlist of all of these fucking rants up until now. So you guys can go there and check it out. And I promise uh, from April, you know, from this month, there's going to be more IRL rants and more IRL videos coming up. So... You guys just got to be patient and bear with me and, uh, you know, get that fucking dart in the basket or whatever the fuck that guy's trying to do. Anyway, love you, sons. Talk to you later. Peace out from dad. Yeah. To the, is she going to do it? Is she going to get in there? Yeah, buddy. <laughs>